Okay, we're going to look at how to do a sky replacement in photo. And this is going to be generally a good video to watch because we're covering several techniques here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up our starter image. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to turn on snapping, which is going to help when we're placing the sky image over the top here. So to enable snapping, or to at least check if it's already enabled, we go to the document menu here and choose snapping. Okay, so in my case, it's not enabled. I just need to tap this to enable snapping, and then we can tap done. So then I'm going to go ahead and put in a sky image as a composite. So to do this, I'm going to go up to the commands menu here and choose place, and then place image, which will take me to my photos library. So I'll go into all photos and I'll find my sky image that I want to add. So then what I need to do is just pinch to zoom out so I can see the corner top left of the image here and just drag that sky in like so. And because I've got snapping on, it will snap to the edge here. You can see the green vertical line. Just release, and then I just want to make the left corner match up over here too. Now, it's also gone slightly over the edge here, so I can just tap drag the bottom node to shift it back in, and there we go. So this sky image is now perfectly aligned with the image underneath. Now, what I'm going to do is open the Layers Studio, and I'm going to hide that sky layer for a minute. And I'm going to select the background pixel layer. So what I need to do in order to create a suitable mask for this sky layer is move across to the Selections Persona up here. And I'm going to select the Smart Selection Brush Tool. And then all I want to do is just drag across most of the sky here, and we've pretty much got the selection we need. But we have some complex detail going on here. So we're going to need to get a bit more detailed with our selection, and we're going to refine it. So to do this, we want the bottommost tool here, which is the Refine Selection tool. OK, so with the brush width here, I'm going to increase it slightly until I get a slightly bigger brush. Then what I want to do is drag over these areas here where we've got some complex foliage with background areas that show through. And I'm just going to drag across here because we've also got a power pylon and some trees. Then I want to release. OK, and Photo has then matted that selection. So if I just two-finger drag across to the other areas of the image, we'll just drag the matte brush across all of this to refine it as well. OK, and just this little bit at the end here. All right, then we're good to go. So I will tap the check to commit that selection. Then I can double tap to fit to screen. And then what we want to do is, on the Layer Studio here, select the placed sky layer. I'm going to show it again. And with our selection active, I want to choose New Mask Layer. OK, so that's now masked the sky, and we've got a good composite going on here. So to get rid of this marquee, we're still in the Selections persona, so I can double tap anywhere on the canvas, and I get some contextual options here. So I'm going to choose Deselect. And it's looking good, but we need to make sure that the sky we've brought in matches tonally with the rest of the image. So now I'm going to introduce to you the concept of layer clipping. So if I move across to the Adjustment Studio here, and I add a Brightness and Contrast adjustment, I'm not going to do anything with this adjustment yet. What I'm going to do is move back to the Layers Studio, and I'm going to tap and hold on that layer, and I'm going to drag it and offer it to the sky image layer. And once we get that blue square box over the thumbnail, that means we can release. And the brightness and contrast adjustment has now been clipped to the sky layer. Indeed, if I just double tap it to expand it, we can see the brightness and contrast adjustment there. So to bring it back up, I just need to double tap it. And then I can just increase the brightness and increase the contrast. And we'll see it's only affecting the sky layer, which is exactly what we want. 
OK, that looks about right for now, but don't forget that we can always go back in and tweak that adjustment at any point if needs be. So additionally, it's looking a little pale compared to the foreground here. So what I'll do is move back to the Adjustments Studio and I will pick up an HSL adjustment, which is Hue, Saturation and Lightness. Now once again, before I start modifying the parameters of this adjustment, I'm going to move back to the Layers Studio and I'm going to do the same thing again, which is I'm going to tap hold on that adjustment and offer it up to that sky layer to clip it. OK, so once that layer has been clipped, it means I can go ahead and increase the saturation like so. And as we can see, it's only affecting the sky layer. OK, so that about does it. I hope that was helpful that by looking at doing a basic sky replacement, we've covered several techniques, including layer clipping and selection refinement. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.